so before I start teaching you about dual symbol decks or dual symbol splash, tri symbol, whatever, uh, I should teach you uh, the basic fundamentals about symbol chaining. I know you've probably heard it and you think you understand it, but we just need to shift your thinking a bit. So let's go talk about that and then we'll come back and we'll talk about some other stuff. Okay, cool. So I'll be right back. Welcome to Simple Chain, uh, real simple stuff. This is a presentation to teach you the basics of simple chaining, but not in the way that you're probably used to thinking about it, just to kind of shift your thought process a little bit. Um, as always, my name is Toy. I'm here to teach you both stuff. So this this is your character. Um, his name's Neil, and for the purpose of this instructional video, he's going to have the symbols fire, void, and all. So normally when you look at a character in UVS or UFS, um, typically you build. You pick one symbol from that character, and you build your deck around that character. You make sure that all cards in your deck uh, use that symbol, and then you know your deck works. Right? That passes all of the basics for symbol chaining, and it makes sure that your deck functions the way you want it to. However, I'm here to shift your mentality away from that concept and to just kind of change it a little bit so that it sets you up to understand multi-symboling decks a little bit better. Um, don't think of it just as a character with a symbol that's going to restrict your building. Um, think of it always as a character with three symbols available to them um, and that each of your cards works off of those symbols. Like, you just, just trust, hold on, hold on, okay. Think of your character like he's a power plant. Like he's, he, he puts out electricity, right? And the type of electricity that he puts out is fire electricity, void electricity, and all electricity, okay? Think of it that way. Think, think, think of it like this. So we come down here, whoop, okay? Just it's a fancy diagram, okay? So our character, Neil, over here, okay? He's a power plant, and he feeds power into fire, void, and all. And as long as nothing interrupts that, he can turn on any fire, void, or all card that we plug into him, and it'll it'll turn on. It'll do what we want it to do, right? So if it's an attack, it'll attack. If it's a foundation, it'll register and clear properly afterwards. If it's an action, it does its stuff. You know, all the things that the game wants to do. So as long as you plug in a, a corresponding power type to feed off of these old receptacles here, it'll work and it'll do what you want it to do, okay? So that's, that's what we got to think of it as. Think of it always as your character is putting out that kind of power all the time, right? That's, that's how it works. Uh, and if you keep that in mind and you come down to the old symbol chain diagram, okay, this just shows the basic symbol progression. So if you built your entire deck around fire, right, and you have old Neil here pumping out power in all three nodes, but then the first card that you put in your card pool is fire, evil, air, that blocks off the void node and the all node so that they are no longer able to continue plugging power through, right? So that means no more power can transition from this evil to evil, even though these two receptacles match, the, the power can't transition through, but because the fire transitions perfectly fine all the way through, you're, you're good. But that just means that whatever card I play over here on the full right-hand side has to have fire on it in order to plug into this fire receptacle and to continue getting power and to continue doing what we want it to do, all right? However, this, this example carries on. Okay, so we're going to come down here now. Ta-da! Okay, so if, hypothetically, you're playing only cards that share all three symbols with your character, well then, that creates this scenario, where all the way to the end of the chain, you are still carrying on all three power sources. All right, so just remember that. Right, so at this point, this far in the chain, I can, I can still play anything I want on any three symbols, and it'll still light up the way that I want it to. It'll still function. Right? So that's a very important thing to remember when you're multi-symboling a deck, is that as long as you maintain and keep the nodes open at the beginning parts of your chain, you can then maintain your maximum options later on to do different things. Okay? And we'll get into that more when we start talking about how to dual symbol and try symbol and splash and blah blah blah, but this, just remember that this is how it functions. Okay? And we're going to take this one step further, and we're going to come down here. I'm going to show you this fun diagram, okay? So we have fire, void, and all coming off of our character. And fire and void are maintaining its path through when we play a fire, void, evil card. However, the evil cuts off the all power, right? Even though on the other side, we have all power continuing, and then we have all power over here as well. But remember that these two cannot connect, even though 
they work, they don't connect, right? They can they can connect to each other, but they can't get the the core power off of uh, old Neil over here, right? So this cuts off the two power sources over here, and because this isn't getting power directly from the character, it can't function, right? That all makes sense. We all know how how the standard chain works. So, um, but what you can do is when you're again multi symboling your deck. You can look for cards that are going to um, allow you to restructure your card pool and to rewire your connections. Okay, and whenever I'm building a multi-symbol deck, I will always, always look for those kind of cards and cards that let you do it. So now there's cards that will naturally do it on their own, so things that clear themselves after playing them, and those are more tail-end cards. So if I was going to play a Revoke, for example, on this chain, I could play a Revoke after this uh, third or second card played here. It would connect onto the Void symbol, and then it would remove itself, um, reopening the fire symbol, right? So you could play a revoke, it would clear out, and then it would reopen. So it would only attach through the void line, and then it would disconnect, reopening up the fire line. So that same concept can be applied at any point in your card pool. So if I had a foundation in my staging area that said, clear one card, uh, form, commit, discard one card from your card pool, in this exact scenario, what I could then do is I could commit that, I could grab this card, this, the first card I played in that turn, and I could remove it. And what that would do is it would allow these connectors to go all the way through. Right? And then this guy's going to go. And we have another connector that can come off here. Which then means that this connector, this previous one here, can light up this guy. And that this guy can then go through, and now this card's activated and it can work. Right? That makes sense. So you can declog what's blocking your power through so that you can then change what symbol you're going with. So in that example, we went fire void, fire void, fire void. Then we would clear off the fire void card that we first played to allow the all symbol to chain through. And then we can play a card on the all chain. Right? And then at this point, if we cleared this off, if this was a card much like revoke that cleared itself after using it, you would then be back to opening up all three symbols again, right? So this, is a, this all makes sense to you, right? I hope it does. So this is the basics of uh, multi-symboling in anything. Even if you're just planning on splashing stuff, just remember that your character is always putting out power and that that power flows through all these symbols. And you just need to remember that you can alternate which symbol is feeding power to the end of the chain. As long as one symbol is feeding power all the way to the end, you can continue playing off of that symbol. So then, um, if you can maintain a high, like all three symbols, then that maintains maximum options for how you're going to multi-symbol and so on. But yeah, that's the basics. So keep that in mind as we go forward and as we review more videos. All right, so there's one other thing that you need to keep in mind as we go forward and start talking about multi-symboling decks. And that is the fact that there are standard turn styles that you will find within universes, and there are five of them. There are build turns, poke turns, half push, full push, and defend. Now, it's not just those five. There's other things that can happen, but you can pretty much categorize things into those five. And this is going to be important when we move forward. I'll explain what they are really quickly. A build is any time that you're investing all your resources or uh, some of your resources into improving your game state. A poke in build is any time that you're trying to push forward next to no resources in order to uh, remove or disable something in your opponent's game state and then transferring over and trying to improve your own game state again. A uh, half push is where you're going to invest uh, only a little bit of resources while still maintaining enough resources to ensure defense, and then building with what, with whatever's left over if possible. A full push is any time you're investing all of your resources in order to try and either defeat your opponent or inflict as much uh, vitality loss or um, game state loss onto your opponent as possible. And then finally you have a defend turn where all your resources are being invested into keeping yourself alive for another turn of the game. And that's all of them essentially explained. And it's important to think about these as we move forward because we'll be assigning uh, different symbols to each of these turn flows and uh, how you distribute your symbols and what cards are gonna operate and what functions really important. And you need to keep those things in mind as we progress forward. So that concludes our primer on multi-symboling. So tune in because we're going to be covering more stuff. I'd also like to talk really quickly about my other channel. If you've come here from that one, um, I won't be making any more videos for that one for the time being. All my content is going to be pushed out onto this one. There's a couple of different Canadian content creators that have kind of pulled together and started pushing forward this initiative. So that's where I'm going to be for 
quite a while. Um, I know that we cover some other card game uh, topics here, but please do subscribe if you want to hear more of my stuff. Uh, I would super appreciate it, and I know it would just help out us small Canadian content creators, and I would be super appreciative. So thank you, and until next time, this was Toy, and I'll talk to you later.